All right, everybody. Welcome to another session of Expert Interrogations. We got Mike Bolden here today. I appreciate you being on, buddy. How's it going? Doing well, doing well. And my main man, Chris Simmons. What's up? Got our, got our hot drinks to soothe the throats. Ready to go. That's right. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, I'm here. You noticed that uh, every call has been pretty much the same for me with my background. I'm actually here in Baltimore, Maryland, doing some filming and uh, taking a little break to do this to do this call today. So uh, we appreciate everybody coming on. We've got a few quick things. Um, got a number of people in, in guest mode. And uh, if you guys want to interact on the call in the chat or you want to submit a question, because the second half of the show, the last half hour, We'll take questions from you guys. You'll do that right below Chris. You can use the submit a question button. Um, but to do any of that, you're going to have to it's gonna ask you to log in. Log in via Facebook or Twitter, um, where you can create a Spreecast account, whatever uh, easiest. We also like to keep things super positive on here. We're, we're, we're pretty strict about that. We want everybody to have a good time and, and, and feel like they can ask anything they want. And, uh, you know, no negative stuff. We'll, uh, we, we don't, no toleration for that. Um, what else? What else? What else? Well, it's presented by Create Insights. Create Insights is a website that Chris and I have uh, to help video professionals take their business to the next level. And we try to keep things uh, very business focused here on uh, expert interrogations. So I think without further ado, we'll get this uh, we'll get this party started today. And uh, Mike, so tell me, just tell us, tell everyone your your story of kind of how things uh, got started and where you're at today, and then we'll dig a little deeper from there. Yeah, actually, this is awesome. Uh, my buddy Shane Mack, I see, is online here. So he's uh, he actually took part in my the launch of my career, which is which is cool. So um, I started photography like six years ago, and uh, just basically like I broke a camera and I needed to buy a new one. And so on the way coming back from Hawaii, I bought a magazine and decided that I was going to get an SLR. And um, I just started shooting for fun, like shooting with mu uh, musicians and shooting friends, and then. I'm just, I've always been a firm believer of like taking on projects that you don't know how to do. So <clears throat> you learn as you go. And like, I think there's, there's an argument, but for me, it's just like, I, I just work really well that way. Cause otherwise I probably wouldn't do the projects, you know, if I was ready. <laughs> so right. sort of lights the fire under your ass and you actually get it done. So I did that for a few years and then I got a, uh, I got a 5D Mark II super good deal from this local camera shop and uh, I just started shooting videos of um, of a studio that we were just uh, me and this guy Ari kind of went in on this photo studio downtown Seattle and I was just filming like us painting it and like hanging coat racks and silly stuff like that uh, but people were sort of like oh this is cool like you're doing video now and so just I just kind of started making fun little videos and then on Twitter um, this guy Shane Mack he was working with uh, T.A. McCann at the time at GIST, um, who got bought out by RIM. And uh, he was like, hey, you know, he had sent out a tweet, I need a video for T.A. like this. And it was a link to Chase Jarvis's bio. And it was like this, um, just like one of his older bios of him walking around, just sort of telling his story. And my friend Donald said, Shane, talk to Mike Folden. And so... I ended up linking up with those guys in a meeting, and then probably about a month later, ended up shooting this video for T.A. McCann, and it was just, uh, it was super crazy, because it was all about the future of work, and T.A., uh, he's a real, real, uh, real smart dude, and, and also real progressive, and, and uh, he was just really talking about, you know, how people aren't going to work in these, like, 40-year terms anymore, and, you know, people are going to they're going to do their thing and learn, and then they're going to start something new, you know, and, and working doesn't have to be work, and then your personal life is your personal life. It can all sort of become this, this, um, this great thing together, and so uh, here I am editing this video. Uh, well, first off, when he sat down in the seat, he goes, I want you to charge me double because I want you to, I want to invest in your entrepreneur career, and I was like, all right, <laughs> so, so I took that, and then that just yeah, editing this video over and over, hearing about, like, do what you love, and, you know, like, it doesn't have to be this dreadful thing anymore, and, like, the future of work is, is something that's enjoyable, and I'm like, I need to quit my job, because I was still working at a restaurant at this time, and so it's probably two weeks later, I quit my job, and uh, had enough money to basically survive for about a month and a half off of what I made off that video, 
and uh, I never looked back. It was just that was pretty much the the initial jump, and uh, and then I was I was rolling since then. And when, when was that again? What what year was that? That was two years ago, I think. Two or three years ago, I kind of forget. I think it was two years ago. So two years ago, you you were at a job. Two week, or a week later, you quit. And then, bam, you're like off for the races. And um, the thing that we, we were talking about beforehand is how word of mouth and, and has been so huge for you and how you went about that whole kind of process uh, for getting people to talk about you and everything. Yeah. So, like, yeah, like referral. And I don't know if it was just because, again, like taking on projects that maybe I wasn't qualified for. So it's my, my diversity in what I was doing was was huge you know I was doing music videos I was doing business portraits I was doing group photos I was doing weddings I was doing business startup videos I was doing commercial I mean there was nothing I wasn't doing so the amount of like referral because I had my hand in everything it was easy Um, but as I started getting more refined of what I want to be doing what I wanted to be known for that was really the key to where the quality referrals started coming in and I really like started thinking about like how do I want to be or what conversations do I want to be in right when I'm not around like what how do I be the the cool thing to recommend you know like when we go out when someone asks you know where's a great restaurant in Seattle or Boston or wherever it is like it's sort of an exciting thing and you sort of get cool points if you know where that cool place to eat is and so how do you switch that around to people referring to, you know you to them, it's like, oh, no, no, I got the guy. I got the guy. There's no other guy. You have to have this guy, and that guy is Mike Folden, or that guy is, you know, whoever that is. So, like, how do you how do you get people to talk about you in that way? And when you figure that out, it's like you don't even have to do anything anymore because there's just all these, you know, ambassadors for what you do out in the world preaching your name. And, and they, like, they're tied to wanting you to get that work, so they're really excited. Well, and have you found that when you became more of the the specialist then, you, you were known for that one thing, that that also mm-hmm. allowed you to charge more for what you were doing as opposed to when you were doing everything? Yeah, for sure. Like, I mean, because one thing you could say, like, I've done a few of these, right? So I know what I can charge. Um, and, you know, the pricing thing has always been really tough for me, um, as most people experience. Right. Um, And my sort of, my approach to that was charge what was worth to me, you know, so, which is different for anybody and everybody. Like at the time, I was comparing all my rates on what I could make at the restaurant because that was a real number to me. So a lot of people probably hated me for that because, you know, maybe $300 a day was absolutely a slap in the face to their business. And I get that. But everybody sort of has to start off. I just didn't want to charge people to charge them, right? Like I wanted to charge them what it was to me and then figure out, okay, here's how long it took. Here's what it took for me to do. This is what I can see myself charging. So when I became more and more taking on the same project, such as I really worked a lot in the startup world, which was absolutely huge for me, just doing basically like business kind of promo videos, um, interview with some B-roll. I mean, that was sort of like my, my meat and potatoes. And once I got that down, I was like, okay, cool, I, I can charge this because I know how long it takes. I know the variables. Um, so absolutely, the more focused and more concentrated in a certain style, I think you can absolutely charge more. Did you find yourself, uh, did you find yourself still traveling a lot for these jobs? Like when you're doing these videos for startups, were you always traveling or did you find a lot locally? And I guess to, to, you're in Seattle. Um, have you always been in Seattle too? Yeah, I've, I've always been in Seattle. Um, I did some traveling. You know, I went to, I, I did a fair amount of traveling to, like, California, uh, Colorado. I mean, not not that much, though. I mean, like, maybe maybe five or six trips a year. I mean, the startup scene is, is really big in Seattle and San Francisco. So it was pretty easy t- either for San Francisco folks to be up in Seattle. We can coordinate that way or just working primarily with Seattle. So... I didn't really have to travel. If I did, it was no, it was no big deal because everything was always, you know, accounted for in the travel. It wasn't like I was paying for it, so it didn't really matter to me. I was ready to go to wherever. Right, 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 right. Um, so the big thing that we want to go on to is the aspect of how, um, if people don't know on this call, 
you're now full time at Creative Live. And, you know, so many guys are struggling as to whether or not they just say kind of that solopreneur, that solo artist where they're, they're just doing their thing by themselves and they're wanting to grow. Some don't want to grow. Some are wondering if they need to hire people. How do they hire people? And some, you know, love the business, don't love the business. Some love the art. You know, so you chose, and, and you told me before the call, last year was your best year ever. You were crushing it. But then you chose to go take a full-time job with somebody else, become, quote-unquote, the employee, I guess, again. But you've got some kind of strategy behind that and kind of explain that to the audience and where that might fit into, you know, other guys' models. And that might work for them, you know, just give them that yeah. opportunity. It's tough to start. Um, I would say I think starting with really figuring out, like, what do you want to do in the long term, you know, um, and like I was telling you earlier, it's like right now, like this whole thing started from a hobby, you know, I, I just liked photography and that's how I was able to make the most money I've ever made in my life, you know, was from just a hobby. And so I'll always love those things, but looking down to say that like in 20 years I just I just want to be a photographer or just want to be a film director and not like saying just in the sense of like that's not a great thing but is that what I want to do um, I don't know you know I, I feel like I have a, a big interest in marketing and creative direction um, as I get further along in my career I, I guess like my my plan is to put put a price tag more on my thoughts than my actual labor because you run out of time you know and you can only do so much in in the day so last year being my most successful year it was awesome like i mean i i still like i just got i just did my taxes yesterday and i was just like i cannot believe that i made that much money like i was so excited and but at the same time i was like did i get to was i really doing what i loved you know and what it came down to was 80% of my time was spent emailing and developing business and creating invoices and, you know, going back and forth with feedback on edits and <laughs> buying gear. Like, there was so much of the job that I started to not really love. And um, so that was one aspect. The other aspect was going back to sort of like, what do I want to do long term? And, you know, when I, when I think about how can I scale my business this next year you know if I want to pay somebody a decent salary say 40 or 50 grand which is like you know which is okay like someone would you know you're, you're gonna get a solid person for that I have to make minimum 150 to 200 K to do that right like how much money do you have to make to hire someone that can help right and that's just one person so like yes one person can help tremendously but then also how much do you have to spend of your time teaching that person how to work with you how much money are you losing in that time now I'm not saying you can't scale you know I'm not saying that there's no way to do this but was I ready to take that on not really because I felt that I was going to continue down the same same path basically I was going to kind of keep doing the work that I was getting paid for and recognized for which might have not been what I wanted to be recognized for not to say it was bad work but it wasn't like my dream stuff that I was shooting, you know, it was, it was sort of my meat and potatoes business stuff. It was cool. Um, but the more, the more you shoot of a certain thing, the more you get recognized for that certain thing. You know, you shoot five weddings, you're now a wedding photographer or videographer, and that's what you're going to get in your referral bank. Um, so when I started contracting with creative live back in October, I mean, the first one I shot was with uh, Lewis house and you know, went down to LA and, shot this run and gun video in like four hours. It was insane. Edited all night. And like the relationship I created with Lewis, like Lewis is a buddy now who I would have never had access to otherwise. And he's just a good dude. He's a smart dude. He's got a huge network. And like that bumped me up on the scale like overnight, right? Like, and then two weeks later, I got to work with Tim Ferriss, you know, and like a month later, I got to work with Kelly Sturette, who's, you know, a huge name in the CrossFit world and really looked up to in, in, in just sort of like overall wellness and health. So I started realizing like, man, the access to awesome, amazing, smart people 
is ridiculous. And I think the turning point was my girlfriend and I were coming back from Montana, and I was reading in uh, Outside Magazine. And I was reading about this, uh, this new system, uh, and one of the startups is called Wellness FX. And basically, they give you your, your complete readout on, um, from a blood sample. So, you know, you pay 200 bucks or 300 bucks. You go, you get a blood sample in your local area. They send it off. And about five days later, you get this incredibly detailed readout of, like, your cholesterol levels and your, your, how your organs are functioning. I was, I was blown away. Like, I'm really into, like, fitness and stuff. So I was like, this is amazing. I'm doing this right when I get back. Well, two days later or three days later, I was at the Kelly Sturette workshop um, doing some photography for the guests. And in walks this guy, and they're like, hey, Mike, here's Jim. Go, go do your thing. And I was like, cool, Jim, what are you doing? And he's like, oh, I run Wellness FX. And I was like, <laughs> like the one that was just an outside magazine that I was reading on the plane three days ago? He's like, yeah. And I was like, no shit. Like, and I got to photograph that guy and have a relationship with him, and he was teaching me how to do handstand push-ups. You know what I mean? Like, it was just so unbelievable, like the network that, that – I mean, that's just like one aspect of it. Right. So I, I think the opportunity to learn – from not only the instructors, the smart people who are coming through Creative Live, but the people who are running Creative Live. I mean, Chase Jarvis is is the co-founder and sort of like kind of creative officer. And uh, I mean, Mika, the CEO, is ridiculously smart. And, you know, Rick, the marketing uh, director, like all these people are so intelligent that I'm learning so much from that, like, it's absolutely priceless. Like the pay cut is not even not even an issue because of the education that I'm getting. And I think when you think that you know it all, like you're totally screwed. You know, like you have to realize that you're forever going to be a student. And, uh, and and I think there's there's a lot of value in that. And I look at it as like I'm getting paid almost to get to go to school. So I'm pretty stoked about it. Well, and, and I think what's really interesting is the aspect of the very first project, if I heard that all correctly, that you did was that People aren't going to be doing the same thing for 40 years anymore, and that was the first thing ingrained in your mind. And now, you can't tell me this had kind of happened to me because back in 2010, I read the Four Hour Work Week for Tim Ferriss, and then got to shoot his launch party for the Four Hour Body. And holy cow, that threw a whole wrench in my life. And yeah. now you're surrounding yourself with these people where these different ideas and opportunities and ways of thinking are going to start to pop up through all that you're doing. Just that thought of just being the guy, just shooting video and getting paid for that, and that's it, had it been tainted from actually when you first started shooting video, and now this is really throwing it, you know, for a loop. What are your thoughts totally. on that? And and because you thought you said you might rather get paid for more more your thoughts as opposed to just trading time for money in the sense of like going out, I got to shoot for five hours and then come back and edit. You know, so what, what are your thoughts on that, all these people coming at you with, with these different ideas? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that's, that's totally, that's, that's right, right on it. I, I think, you know, the, and just track me back if I get off track here, but I think the, the real, the eye-opener for me was shooting interviews was, was the big, like, what I learned quickly was that if you're just a camera op on an interview, you have no control of the story. If you put if you put the 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 story in the person who's telling it, if you put it in their hands, like you are you're running a huge risk because most people don't know how to tell their own story. You know, and that's what the storytellers that's our job is to direct their story. They have a story, but it's up to us to sort of create and craft it so that the rest of the world understands it and thinks it's amazing. And so the more and more I was shooting these videos, like, I realized that I was less of a camera guy and I was more of a director, like, more of, more of a, a human being, like, interacting with another human being and really, like, figuring out that story and creating emotion. Um, and so that was, like, sort of my first step. And when I, as I started kind of selling myself to people, you know, the initial price when they were, because everybody, of course, wants to know price right out the gate. And so I think that, like, I would say price, and then I would tell them, I mean, I would always ask the question, what do you want this to do? What do you want this video to do? And most people, which is pretty funny, like, they have no clue. Well, I don't know. I mean, we just, like, want a viral video, and, you know, like, we want to put on Facebook and stuff. And it's like, 
okay, <laughs> like, why don't you just give me like 2000 bucks and then I'll come over with a GoPro and, you know, shoot for an hour and then see you later. Like, if you have no goal, if there's no reason or you don't want people to do anything specifically, like, you're, you're wasting your time. And so I became more of a consultant with people about what do you want this thing to do? Is it you want people to go to your website? Do you want people to sign up for a newsletter? Do you want people to knock on your door? Do you want them to apply to your to your job? What is it that you want them to do when they see this thing? And then let's work backwards. So, yeah, I think going back to with what you're saying, like absolutely, you know, like getting paid for more of your thoughts, like become a consultant, become a director, become a storyteller, which is something that's A, unique, and not everybody with, you know, with a cousin and a camera can can compete with you. Because I think at the end of the day, I think, you know, I disagree with a lot of the folks in the industry of, you know, they hate the technology. You know, when iPhones came out, it was the biggest slap in the face of photography or what. And it's like, I just feel like if you're not willing to evolve, it doesn't matter if, if it's right or wrong or, if, or you know, it doesn't matter. If, if the people, if everybody wants iPhone photography tomorrow, I can either spend my days complaining and whining about how this is just, an uproar and it's just embarrassing or I can adapt and figure out how to do it and create my own niche in it right and a lot of people are going to disagree with that but for me I don't want to be replaced tomorrow so as much as I can carve out a space in this world that's unique and that's Mike Folden and not just a camera guy or or a photographer or whatever that is I think that's way more important than getting really good at something I think it's like providing an experience that people really put that that uh that trust in you because they want that experience with you specifically. Dude, phenomenal stuff, phenomenal stuff. And if, if Chris, if you have anything here in a second, I got one more, one more main question for you. So you're now having this full time thing, and beforehand you'd mentioned doing some more personal projects in that off time. And I don't even know if there's an agreement that you might automatically answer this question with that you have with Creative Live, but what does that look like now? Because all the stuff that you did, I mean, when when people build a reputation. You know, leads and referrals don't just come to a halt and stop because you change direction. They'll still come. They're going to still ask you to do things. So for you, what does that look like now? Are you literally, it's creative live and personal projects? Or how are you saying no to things? And, and how does that look for your business? Are you still going to take on some opportunities? Yeah. So it's, it's, a, it's a little bit of a, a gray area. Uh, right now, I'm not taking on anything really. Um, mainly because I, I'm giving myself completely to Creative Live. Um, I don't want to take advantage or take for granted that opportunity. Um, so right now, I mean, I've referred, <laughs> it, it, it's sort of, I did the calculations the other day to see how much I've referred out in the last just three months, and it like, it almost brought a tear to my eye. But it was, it's awesome because you know what, I'm giving work to the people that I love in the industry and that like, that I trust and that they're looking for that work, you know, so it's it's an awesome experience right now down the line absolutely I think like within the next three months after I really sort of get a, a little bit of more stable footing with creative live like definitely taking on some personal projects um, you know I I really like doing music videos they're just fun um, and so I think sort of what always <laughs> the biggest stress about music videos is budget because most musicians are broke so my goal definitely is to like seek out musicians and songs that I just like and it's like let's go make a video you pay for rentals if we have to rent everything anything and like I don't really care about budget I just want to make this thing because I have a vision um, yeah. and so it's things like that and I also have a series I don't even know if it's considered a series because there's only three but um, I have a series and a thing that I've been working on for for a long time it started off as a blog post um, kind of a photo blog and then it turned into a video series called greetings um, and it's just it's just a little short story three to five minutes of uh, you know people that I find really interesting and so the one that one that uh, really really did well and got a lot of a uh, lot of views was um, the one on my tattoo artist Brian and uh, you know I took my time with that and I really like telling that story and that's probably my favorite kind of work is creating emotional um, stories that have impact and so absolutely want to continue to do the greeting stuff on the side um, so yeah that was a long answer but definitely full-time right now for creative live so minimal on the what I would take on um, any pay projects that come through the door I'm totally referring out and uh, and um, 
other than that, like personal projects will start popping up here in the next few months. Yeah, and that takes a lot of self-discipline because it's funny. You can take that route. Even if you decide, like earlier, you were saying you wanted to become known for something. If somebody was talking about something and you came to their mind, they know exactly what they would use you for. But other things, again, would still be popping in. And to say no to those things, it, it takes a lot of discipline because there's so many guys out there who just are doing everything. And it's hard for them to ever narrow down to the thing that they want to do or the thing they, can, they want to do and can be most profitable, whatever, as opposed to, oh, I'm going to do this this week and this next week and this thing this day and, and all these varieties. So it's, you know, um, like you said, it, it, you're kind of like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe how much I've turned away. And some guys would start spinning their wheels. Well, you know, we talk about this on, on Create Insights with our coaching calls because some guys are going – well, do I do a referral fee? Do I start, you know, do I start banking in off of sending these yeah. people leads and, and all that? So, um, but it all comes back. You, know, you can probably talk about well, that yeah. in a second, but. I, I, yeah, I think that like, because I was, I mean, I was exactly what you're just saying, like referral fees, you know, some projects that were in the, in the you, big numbers, I was kind of like, whew, 10% would be a nice little chunk. But at the end of the day, I think I'd rather honestly just like, spread the love, you know, and like give out the karma and, you know, maybe it's, it's, it's a little hippie ish, but I think like you give out and it's going to, it's going to come back. And I think that if you do things for the right reasons, um, and, uh, and just let go, I think you just got at some point let go. I mean, to be honest with you, man, I, I don't want to be connected in these things, you know, and when you have a referral fee, like you're sort of opening yourself up to questions and blah, blah, blah. It's just like, hey, just take this, you know, and enjoy it and learn and do your thing. Um, and just, you know, I, I'm so much less stressed. <laughs> it's, right. it's awesome. These last, these last, like, month, it's been, like, you know, and I love working for myself. It's awesome. Like, I, I really enjoyed working for myself. But, like, changing things up, like, I've definitely – I'm doing way less, you know, I'm focusing much more on, on specific things within Creative Live, and I got to tell you, like, I'm, I'm definitely, like, it's, it's a good change for right now. That's awesome. Well, hey, um, if Chris has anything here in just a second, guys, we're going to start taking your questions here in just a few minutes, so I know not everybody pays attention to the chat all the time, uh, but if you guys want to start interacting there or you want to submit your questions, just open up the screen, hit submit a question or chat, and, uh, you know, it'll ask you to log in, log in via Facebook or Twitter. Um, but to submit the questions that will queue up like there's the one on the screen right now, just hit submit a question. We'll do that for the last half. But, Chris, do you have, um, do you have anything that you want to ask Mike about? Yeah, I do. I've got a few things that um, I'd like to get your take on since you're kind of in the, in the process of doing it. Um, you know, the whole idea of, you know, five, six years ago, even 10 years ago, I mean, you know, very few companies had in-house video capabilities. You know, I mean, the, the really super big companies would have a department, but, you know, the rest of them, you know, we we're just making tons of money doing video for Fortune 500 companies and those kinds of things. But, but what I'm seeing now, especially over the last three years, is that these companies are starting to, you know, create a video capability internally. And what that's doing is it's taking away the sort of day-to-day, -day, you know, nuts and bolts type video projects that guys like us, you know, the independent company kind of rely on. You know, mm -hmm. you know, I call them the, the bill payers, you know. And so what I've often looked at is like, well, are we starting to see something in our industry where – it's almost going to be beneficial for the small independent production company or the small independent producer to start looking at, well, maybe I can get on full time if my best clients, you know, if my largest client's business get on full time, do everything we're already doing except have the benefits, have the guaranteed work, have the salary. Um, I mean, what's, are you seeing, I mean, are more companies in, in your neck of the woods kind of starting to look for that? type of thing or or I just I just feel like we're on the verge of another paradigm shift where you know people are going to be trying to find more ways to do this kind of stuff in hell in house as opposed to paying you know the independent production company to do it for them yeah like I don't know enough companies that are doing it to know one you know to to say whether that's actually shifting or not I mean I thought about that the other day where I was like the experience I'm getting at Creative Live, I want to make sure that I don't leave with what I came with so that, you know, because if, if I'm just a, 
a promotions video guy at Creative Live, then like I'm only really capable of getting another full time position with a company who needs a promotions video guy or that. So that's why I'm trying to get a little bit more well rounded, get my hands in like marketing and things like that because. I think it's pretty unique at this point. I don't know, but I feel like to have someone on full time for it to make sense, I think you got to be putting out a lot of videos. Um, you know, most companies take six months to even figure out what one video do they want to release because <laughs> especially in the startup world, they're changing you know, they're changing everything every day. So, I mean, with startups, one of the frustrating things with them is that, which which actually for them, I think it would probably be a great idea to bring someone in full time uh, because when, you're, when your story is shifting so much all the time to pay for a contractor every two oh, months yeah. to, to now, oh, now we got to show this site launch because it's completely different. You know, we used to be a burger locator and now we're like a car finder. So it's like, how do you like with those like if you're turning things that quickly like yeah i think it's more i could see that happening but i don't know I, I don't know like i think everybody needs a video in this day and age like no matter what business you are i think it's beneficial um but i don't know if you need a lot of videos you know like creative live needs <laughs> like 150 videos a year right like i won't physically be able to make as many videos as they need, you know, like, right, right. and, and so it's, it's hard. I, I think, yeah, I, I don't know the, the, the hard answer to that question, but I, I think that it's, it is unique um, for me to have a position that I do at Creative Live. I, I, I never really thought that I was going to be able to take my business and basically just pop that into a company and say like, yeah, like this is a new department and I'm on salary for that. So I wonder if, uh, and some of this might be more of a philosophical discussion as opposed to just straight Q and A. But um, you know, I keep thinking, you know, everybody, the the magical word in what we do is retainer. You know, I mean, in terms of if you can get, you know, guaranteed revenue coming from those clients over long term. But I wonder if there's an opportunity to take like what you're doing in Creative Live and maybe position us as you know, that part-time employee or whatever that says, hey, we're going we're gonna to produce this much work for you, or even if it's a full-time position, um, but maybe not, you know, you're clocking in 40 hours a week, but it's just kind of a full-time commitment. Um, it's, you know, I think, I think it would just be interesting to know, because I think, I mean, there's a lot of guys in, in the video production world now that are, you know, obviously they're struggling, and so what we're trying to look at at Create Insights is, is to offer some some of those revenue generating ideas, and of course we we you know give them advice on how to improve you know their business skills and marketing and sales and that kind of thing, but I really just keep thinking that there might be an opportunity for guys to sort of do a a 50 50 split or even a 70 30 that says hey you know I could be full time for this company and you know do the work there learn some learn other skills like you're talking about you know try to learn marketing try to learn other things. But still try to figure out a way to kind of keep the a little bit of the the company that they own going, so that maybe as the economy improves, they can start to scale out of, of that full time thing instead of just continuing to spin their wheels without without getting the income being completely private. I mean, I don't yeah. know. That's probably another topic, but it's just it, it's just interesting because I see it's happening big time in our market here in the southeast. Um, sure. You know, just bigger companies. We're getting squeezed every day. You know, they're saying, well, we want you to do the work for us, but we're only going to pay half of what we normally pay you. And, oh, by the way, you've got to integrate with all of our in-house video guys, you know, to do your job, which is just a freaking nightmare. And I just want to say, you know what, just let me come in and run it. Just run the whole freaking yeah. department for you. And, and I'll still, you know, do what I need to do for my other customers. Sure. Yeah, and I think, I'm trying to think if there's a way I can tie this in. I, um you know, an idea I've had in the past was uh, what happened when I when I sit down for these interviews a lot of times is it becomes coaching. And what's interesting is as you – when you don't have um, – when you don't feel you like you're an expert, you feel really awkward when you're sitting down with a high-level CEO trying – and they're looking at you for some for some advice. And so, like, one thing that I think is, it goes back to us talking about, like, be more than a camera guy. 
you know and so if if they want to if they have an in-house company you know chances are they're probably camera guys i would assume okay, like they're probably right. editors and camera guys so take you know lose 80 percent of the work on that project and charge half right so like just input your creative thought you know my friend brian he he was really he was pumping out he was like five grand for creative there's no camera shooting there's nothing if you want creative insight if you don't have a story and you want me to create it it's five thousand bucks <laughs> And I was like, what? That's crazy. And people were buying it up. So, you know, maybe position yourself to, if you're a good storyteller, if you're a good director or a good producer, whatever it is, figure out how to, okay, cool, you want to do that. Your cam what do your camera guys do? What does your in-house team do? And then lose all the stuff that you don't have to do and don't charge that much less, but charge half or whatever it is. So you, you end up doing less work so you can take on more things. You're still making good money. As a, as a possibility, I'm not sure. No, I like that. And I've even thought about trying to, to kind of flip the model too and say, well, it's, I mean, we'll still handle the high-end projects, but maybe we need to start creeping into that game of, of teaching the in-house departments how to do what they do better and kind of have that additional revenue stream, you know? Totally, yeah. No, I totally, I think there's a huge, huge, huge market in education, not only like that, but like, yeah, absolutely, just teaching. And I think it's... Um, it's an interesting thing too when you talk about teaching because I think you become less competition and you're more of the expert, you know, like, and when you want to step in, like, dude, I teach everybody how to do this. Like, you're really going to, you know, like, you are the guy to go to. And so I, I absolutely think, like, and you learn so much when you're teaching, you know, like, you learn more than you ever thought you knew that you were teaching about. <laughs> so. Well, and, and then you still get hired to do the really high end, big budget projects anyway. So what you're exactly. doing is. Because you've lost, and I'm saying this in my situation, because I've lost a lot of those, you know, nickel and dime projects that, you know, added up over the course of a year, you know, if I could sort of flip the script on them and, and maybe get a, you know, a retaining consulting fee or, or creative fee or something, I could essentially get that revenue back, but with very little work associated with it. So, yeah, exactly. that's, that's interesting, man. That's interesting. Um, I think that's all I got, Michael. I mean, I could, I could talk to Mike all day long. I, I love these kind of conversations, <laughs> but I know we've got some questions in the queue, and I definitely don't want to monopolize the time. Yeah, so guys, we're going we're gonna to take your, your questions here. Again, if you're, if you're listening in here, there's, a, there's about 45 of you right now, uh, a lot of you in guest mode. Uh, again, we'd love for you to ask your questions uh, to Mike, uh, and he'll answer them here if, for the last 20 minutes or so. But if you want to do that and you're in guest mode, uh, be sure to log in. You'll do that when you try to submit a question right below Chris or you try to chat. Uh, again, log in via Facebook or Twitter. Uh, again, this is brought to you by Create Insights. Uh, it's Chris and I's site for uh, teaching video professionals on how to take your business to the next level, what we've been talking about here. So I uh, appreciate Mike being on. And guys, get your questions in. And Chris, rock it out. All right. First question is from... Hope. We just had lose you. He's frozen in a crazy thing. <laughs> <laughs> the questions are so good. Hold on. Oh, you back, Chris? Hold on one sec. Uh, let's see here. If he doesn't come back. Oh I'll... no. It looks like we can read the question. Is All that right. the pricing right. well, is the hardest stuff? We'll, we'll wait if uh, Chris comes back here. But uh, pricing is the hardest stuff. I'm working on two projects right now. One is 9K and one is 1500. The difference is the client's budget. Hey, uh, I, I didn't price it. I asked for their budget. Would you break down costs and assign price to everything? Um, let's see. So pricing, I'm working on two projects right now. One is 9K and one is 15. The difference is the client's budget. So you're saying basically it's the same project, but one is 9,000 and one is 1,500, if I get that correct. Is that right, Bill? You, on, on the call still, buddy? Bill, Bill uh, there he is. Okay. Yes. Essentially, yeah. Um, you know, I I hate pricing. I hate getting too uh, too involved in it. To be honest with you, how I do it is I go, does it make sense? Is it worth my time? Uh, do I care about either project? You know, is is the fifteen hundred dollar project like? some awesome nonprofit that you're telling this story. Um, I don't know, like, I think the easiest way I would always price stuff was just by the day. What do I want to make a day? 
um, and including sort of planning, production, shooting, creative, and editing, and then delivery, and like figure out how many days that's going to be, what's your day rate. Um, you can always look at what other people are charging. I think roughly, depending on where you're at, it's like 400 to maybe 1,200 or something a day for like a, a videographer or something like that. It, of course, that's a pretty big scale, but figure out like what generally you want to make, and then figure out if it makes sense. I mean, I've done stuff that has been 10 times more work, but the story was incredible, and I wanted to make sure that that story was told, and then I've done stuff that was half the work, and I could charge five times more. I think, you know, it, it depends on how you run your business. Um, again, for me, it was just like, does it make sense? Is it, is it, uh, do I lose money on the job? Then, like, I probably wouldn't take it unless it's a really important thing that I want to uh, make sure that I do. Um, but other than that, like, just figure out if it if it makes sense. I I, I feel like that's not a great answer, but uh. So it's interesting well, too, Bill. Real quick, Bill saying something that the nine K project he did not actually pitch. I'm, that, I'm assuming he wasn't involved in that, so he's saying he wouldn't no, even charge as much. No, what no. he's saying is that what he's saying is that instead of proposing what it would take to do the project. You know, the client just said, well, we've got $9,000 oh, to spend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he actually yeah. was able to, to get a lot sure. more profit for the same job, whereas he's saying that if he would have actually wrote a proposal based on what he thought it would take, he would have charged a lot less. less. So, well, well I, th I would just say just don't leave money on the table. I mean, if you can get it, get it, you know. <laughs> yeah, take it. And I think also use it to figure out maybe you can pop in a couple extras. Like if you would have only charged like four grand, they're giving you five extra work your ass off, like do some stuff that like is they're going to really remember you by um, because if they're the kind of people who have 9K for a video, like you want them to be calling you every time they have a video. So just work on that relationship and just, I mean, yeah, totally. I don't think though, you know, taking advantage uh, is, eh, I'm not a huge fan of that because I think what happens is you start getting in this boat where you think you're worth 9K for, you know, half the work and then when people aren't going to pay that, then you sort of, you're going to lose business that way, I think, if you just, like, take and just provide. So figure out how you can just create that experience, you know, really create that experience. And um, I always found when I was paid more, I just did a better job because I cared. There was no shortcuts. I was, I was like, no way. This guy's paying me the right amount. Like, I'm going to make sure this thing is amazing. And I, I totally think that, yeah, I, I would absolutely go for that. Absolutely awesome. All right, so he's... Bill got in quick. He's got a second question here. Hopefully, I won't crash again. All right. So, if you have a great story with a client that doesn't have a large network, how do you get it seen? You let me know. <laughs> That's uh, I you know I've struggled with um, with getting stuff seen for sure. Like it's hard. Um, I've had clients who pay for YouTube stuff, and I think people get really caught up on um, views. And one thing that I learned about YouTube was that videos that have more attention, which is like rewinds, rewatches, pauses, more interaction and engagement, have a much higher dollar value than just view counts. So, of course, a million views, like, that's awesome. You're going to make some dough on that. You're going to, like, people are going to see it. But, like, I definitely think, you know, I have a few videos that have like, have like 300 views, but they have like 30 comments. And then I have a video that has, you know, maybe 200,000 views and it has like 30 comments. So I think don't get too caught up on the views. Take the, the slow approach and build it organically is my approach. I mean, it's taken me six years to get a blog following of like 100. You know, like it's, it is what it is. But I haven't struggled financially for work for, you know, so don't, I think people also associate views with, with how, how successful are you as a business. Um, but um, yeah, I don't know, like, there's definitely like, obviously, Facebook, Twitter, and all those things. And, and really, I think the biggest way, though, is to get somebody else talking about your project, and not yourself. So looking for blogs that have a, a good traffic that your that video would would fit with you know, get them to post it. What what can you do to get them to post it and use other people's networks um, unless you have a really large network? Yeah, I mean, that's a big thing, whether it's Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, whatever. We get so caught up 
And, I mean, you just probably were there. I don't know how much you saw of, like, James Wedmore. We've had him on uh, Expert Interrogations here. He was just on Creative Live last week, and he talked a lot about how, you know, he's had videos that have sent him, you know, 90 leads that have 500 views, you know, yeah. and, and, and things like that. So you can't always just sit here and get so caught up, oh, my gosh, 10,000 likes equals, you know, $100,000. There's people with businesses that might only have 500 likes. It's like it depends on your business, what you're doing. There's so many variables, but like you said, engagement is so huge more than anything else. You want quality people, not just quantity. So that's what you're creating, yeah, and quality over quantity. Totally, and one thing to keep in mind, like Bill had just said, it's hard to have a great story that never gets seen. Man, I, I totally agree. Keep in mind, that story is forever, though. So, like, if it doesn't do what you want it to do in a year, like, that story is still an awesome story in 10 years. And, like, I know we get caught up on how many people see it overnight, and a week later the video's dead because it's, it's a week old now. But, like, keep in mind, like, every once in a while I'll get just this weird surge in comments or attention on a video that, like, was shot a year ago. And it's, like, it's such a cool thing. You're, like, oh, that's awesome. You get all excited because, like, you forgot how cool that video was anyways because it's, like, a year old. So... You know, I, I agree. It's it is hard when you put a lot of work into something. You want a lot of people to see it, but don't put the work in for people to see it. Put the work in because you care, and I think it'll it'll build an audience eventually. Jonathan. All right. Next one is Jonathan Avalon. What's up, Jonathan? Mike, did you film your own video that's on your about page? I did not. That is my good friend Chris Wojcik. Uh, his website's at the end of that video. Um, Can you type that in. He please? is, yeah. Actually, I don't know if I even should because I think his website's a wreck. But we'll uh, video we'll see on. what what happens. Yeah. So I, I you know I I, I co-directed it with him, but I mean he was like he was the driving factor for sure. He did awesome uh, awesome work with um, uh, the sound design. You know, a lot of people aren't even going to notice that stuff, but like the cars driving by and the you know all those things were not in the original recording so that was that was pretty cool i was uh i was very uh very excited about that um i did not pay him i traded and this is the part where i'm so glad you asked that trade your work i just want to give a quick little rant on this because i have the the things that have totally changed my career in big ways have been the things that i trade for and i think the reason is because you don't care about what you're getting in return. Like you're not caught up on the money, you're not caught up on the time, or or I guess you could be, but I recommend that you don't be. So I do trade with my CrossFit gym, and I absolutely love it because I just get to come with him with ideas. Hey, dude, I have this idea of a video and some photos like this. And he's like, yeah, cool, of course, because anything you're doing is more than what we have right now, and you're good at what you do. So it's this really cool relationship, and my tattoo artist is the same way. I have like I've used him as a as like a, a test subject for building a business and marketing and his business like he told me just recently he's like literally since that video came out my business has more than doubled since that video came out so that was I mean it's not there's no stats to back that up but he says he is twice as busy and he can't even believe it so trade you know like have friends that shoot you know trade them work like get yourself on camera become become like an expert um, become someone to listen to and I think that also just helps create a, a bigger following to in turn create a bigger audience uh, real quick before you take the next one there Chris Rains is saying what what did you get in trade actually from from that particular guy if you don't mind saying put your arm up <laughs> uh, yeah so yeah, so lots of tattoos. Um, no, from Chris specifically, I traded him a camera actually. So it was uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I what the what that video is worth is not a camera. That that video is worth way more than a camera. Um, and what what I provide for my CrossFit gym is is way more. And what I've provided for for Brian, my tattoo artist, like he's he feels forever in debt. But I don't like that's not even important. You know, like. Just do what you want to do and don't track hours. Just do it and love it and and use it for something that like can better your life. You know, if you want to get a if you want to get in shape, like look for a dietitian or a, or a gym or if you want to learn paddleboarding, like 
use your your skills to get things that you can't get you know where you're currently at and then like you're just gonna have a better life anyways you're gonna experience more things so uh, that's what i'm doing right anyways. now <laughs> yeah 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 I'm in baltimore <laughs> so absolutely I, I get that all the time so rock and roll go ahead all right this next one i, I think priya may or priya may sorry if i'm mispronouncing that uh, you mentioned becoming buddies with Lewis Howes. Are there any others that you have worked with that you now consider true friends? You know, I think uh, James Wedmore I would consider a true friend. And not, you know, it's – these people are really busy people. Um, so, they, you know, they're not necessarily in the business looking for friends when they come on a Creative Live. But um, – I think just we I click with certain people and James was an awesome dude just really really <clears throat> really nice guy fun to work with um, and obviously having a similar interest in, in video production and whatnot it was it was just sort of a no-brainer um, but uh, but yeah I mean I have a relationship with Kelly Sturette now which is which is pretty cool um, but yeah I think overall one thing that was actually amazing was Ramit Sethi he's a he's a big financial guru and um, I took some photographs of him, and he he personally emailed me a couple weeks later and said, "Mike, I just want to thank you so much for not making me look like a fat old Indian man." <laughs> That's all. I never replied, but like that alone was like, dude, Ramit is like a pretty high profile guy. Yeah. He took the time to just like personally email me, like thank you, and made me feel like, wow, like those images, he really liked those. That's it was just a cool feeling. So you know, personal friends, Lewis, maybe James. Um, other than that, n none yet, but it's only it's only the beginning. Just begun. Next one is from Sarah. She says, what's your best advice for turning a hobby into a career? Deep. Big question. Uh, I mean, assuming that you want to turn your hobby into a career, um, I mean, I, I think you treat it like a career. I think, I don't know, like, I think people, I'm trying to think here how I can put this out, but I know a lot of people who think that you get good at something, maybe it's a hobby, whatever, and all of a sudden, you get a business license online, and then all of a sudden, people start knocking at your door, and they start buying your time. And when that doesn't happen, people get all bummed out. And they're like, why? I mean, I have all the gear, and, like, I'm good at what I do, but, like, I don't know why. I'm just kind of struggling. And if you want to turn – the big thing to know when you want to turn your hobby into a career is your hobby is no longer a hobby. It's your job. And when your hobby is your job, it's not always fun. So – and there's way more things that are now involved with that hobby, um, including business. You know, you have to learn how to bring in business, how to retain business. You have to follow up with people. You have to learn how to create invoices. You have to learn how to do taxes. All these things, you have to figure that out. And, uh, you know, I think that's – you need to look at it that way and, and don't think that, like, you know, there are some people, artists maybe, who just continue to do the same thing they've always been doing and they sell paintings or – sell photographs but I think that in the end like it's a different it's a whole different animal and so knowing if that's something that you want to get into and possibly not love that hobby as much as you once did that's a possibility yeah I'd say just make sure that you're cool with it not being a hobby anymore right <laughs> yeah I mean yeah totally like I shoot iPhone photos is my hobby like getting my SLR outside of work is a real task you know I'm like ah, I don't want to like edit and like upload and blah blah so I'm like my hobby is walking around and either shooting film or shooting my iPhone that was never the case before you know and they're amazing now too that's the, the photos that they can take and what you can do just inside the phone with the, the, the Photoshop apps you know Instagram and things like that is unbelievable yeah absolutely absolutely we got Terrence since submitting that creative black live, pixels, <laughs> since submitting that creative live video to go to Vincent Lafare class years ago, and now working for them, how does it feel to work there? It's cool. So yeah, I didn't tell this part. So Terrence actually and I submitted a video 
I, probably it was two years ago to be in the Vincent Laferte um, uh, cinematography workshop at Creative Live. And I tried to be all funny and thought I was totally going to get it, and I didn't get chosen. And I was pissed. <laughs> and uh, he was too. And so it was kind of funny. Um, you know, years later, sort of, sort of, yeah, getting that job. I think really maybe uh, taking a step back is Chase Jarvis was the whole reason why I decided to, to start photography as a business. Uh, when I got into it, it was like at the height of him telling everybody how he's doing it. So I was just completely thrilled with all the stuff. And what was more full circle for me was in October, Chase Jarvis called me and said, hey, man, you know, like I've been seeing your work and stuff. And I've had a few like run-ins and I've kind of gotten to know Chase over the years. But like to work with Chase at a company to where he was just like my biggest idol and never thought I would ever like meet him or ever work with him, not to mention, you know, like that was definitely the bigger the bigger uh, full circle for me. But yeah, it's definitely interesting. Like I'm now creating these video submission call outs for people like me who were submitting videos two years ago. So it's pretty cool. That's awesome. All right. So Chris has got a question. Chris Rains. Mike, love the videos on your site. Really great stuff. My question, do you produce your videos with a team or do you one man band most things? Yeah, so I'm completely a one man band. Um, you know, every once in a while, if I need a, a second camera or something like that, where I can't run the camera, I'll I'll have someone else come out, um, just pay them a quick day rate. But you know, it's uh, all the two camera interview stuff is just all me. So I'm running two cameras and interviewing and doing audio and like I mean, it's it's super stressful, um, especially when you're traveling. But yeah, like just a one man band um, and. It's going to continue that way for Creative Live for a little while, but I'll definitely get some sort of people to work with and, and be more of a team. So, um, yeah, just, just been a one-man band. And that was sort of going back to the original conversation about scaling um, and how, how, do you, you know, how, do you, how do you afford a team, really, that, that's worth working with. That was my biggest challenge. And so, yeah, I, that's why I just continued to, to, stay, uh, to stay solo. Some things that guys struggle with with that, did you ever, I mean, you know, you've never really – giving away anything in exact pricing or anything like that anyways, and that's, you know, up to you. But in regards to pricing, did you ever find that people as the total entire one-man band when you were showing up to shoots, did that ever devalue you? You know, some guys are afraid, oh, if I'm not showing up with at least a few people and I'm more looked at as the, the high-level guy and there's somebody doing, you know, the shooting, you know, that they're not going to they're not gonna want to pay that fee. How did you, you know, deal with that? Yeah, I think, you know, a lot of, a lot of people talked about that. Um, I definitely, I would flip that and say that, like, have you seen my work? That's why you hired me. Like, yeah, it's just me and I kick ass, like, and I'm worth every penny. So Confident. I think, well, yeah, I, if you don't have it, like, if you can't back up what you're worth, then, like, you're not worth that, right? Like, you have to know what you're worth. And if, if someone can crack you down by saying you don't have a team with you and you're like, yeah, you're kind of right. I'll give you a thousand bucks off actually. You know, like you have to, you have to know like, absolutely. It's just me. Like you should pay $2,000 more to get another guy out here and we'll even make it better. But, um, <laughs> I, love that. I, I totally think, and a lot of people too, they were like, you shoot with SLRs. And I'm like, yeah, they're like, but I mean, what if you show up and like, it's just a little camera and they like, they want like a big camera. And I'm like, well, okay, cool. What, you know, is it, are you putting on a show or like, I don't want to have any secrets, you know, like, so I, I don't know. Like, I, I think being transparent is totally cool, man. Like, just do your thing. And if you can't back it up, then you're probably not worth it. This is, uh, this is my tactic. Chris just said, throw a, a mat box on it and they'll be quiet. That's pretty, I put a mat yeah, box yeah, on yeah. every camera I take out just so there's no, it's not even a discussion. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that was that was great stuff, guys. If there's any, uh, uh, you know, one or two more, that's probably all we take. Otherwise, we're going to wrap this up. If anybody has anything else, we truly, truly uh, appreciate everybody being on the call today. Appreciate Mike being on the call. Some great, great stuff, um, dude. Rock and roll, my man. Chris, you got anything else, buddy? No, I just I love every week how we get to just explore the ways that different people are making it work. I mean, yeah. it's just really cool, you know, to see. Uh, it's really inspiring to me. I mean, I'm, you know, kind of the, 
the atypical small corporate video production company. I mean, there's two of us full time, you know, a handful of freelancers that we kind of rely on. But uh, really a lot lately, I'm kind of been in this humdrum of doing a whole bunch of crap that I don't want to do, except we've got a whole lot of projects that are all due at the same time. So it's like, you know, times a thousand all within the same same time frame. And it's the same problem, different time in terms of, you know, how do you, how do you, uh, get the team you need, but you don't want to pay, and then there's cash flow, and you think, well, let me hire a bunch of freelancers because we're really busy this week, so you make those commitments, and then the clients say, oh, well, we need to, you know, we need to change the shoot till next week, and then you don't have anything planned next week, but you've already committed to your best freelance, you know, and it's just this, it's this crazy cycle, um, and unfortunately, in a good economy, I could, you know, tell clients, hey, if you change, you're going to get charged. If you do, and maybe I can still do it. I just, you know, I just haven't had the uh, the the same results, you know, with customers when I've kind of tried to, you know, hold their feet to the fire for that kind of thing. But uh, it, it's really awesome to see all these different business models, and I and I learn. I mean, it's it's awesome to to log in and learn something new um, on each one of these expert interrogations. Well, Mike, I think we yeah. got one more from your buddy uh, Shane here. So if you take that just real quick. Oh, he's, he's popped in with oh. two. Uh, let's see here. I think it's the same one. Oh, it is. Same one. All right. So what didn't go well after you jumped ship and quit your job two years ago? What was the hardest part? Man, there was a lot of hard parts. Um, yes. uh, time. I mean, really, it was just – it was truly time. Like, there was – there was sometimes where I wasn't making enough money, but I never got it. Never got that bad. Like I've been pretty good about just like hustling and just getting out there and doing something. Um, also, being able to do photography <clears throat> as well as video was sort of nice to have in the back pocket. Like when video was slow, sometimes I could whip out some photography and pay some bills. Um, but really, like I think the hardest part was just figuring out what my focus was going to be, you know, like not being the guy, the Swiss army v videographer, because you just get so spread out and you don't get good at anything and you just sort of can do a lot, but you're not great at any of it. Um, and I feel like you're very replaceable at that point. And going back to my point earlier is I don't want to be replaceable is like, how do you become that expert? So that was probably the hardest part was just like figuring out what am I good at, figuring out what do I want to do. And I honestly don't even think I still know. Um, but definitely um, time it was also really tough. Like you have to make tough decisions and work really long hours sometimes. But I think that if you – if you like what you're doing and you, you think you believe in it, like it's, it's crazy that a 17 hour day isn't that hard. Like it's insane. Like you're tired and you, but you don't really realize that till you actually get home. You know, you're not watching the clock like you are at a job that you're all bummed out at. So I think, um, that's a good gauge. If you're not enjoying yourself after long hours, you're probably, you may not be cut out for it. So I think, you know, the time is definitely, you spend definitely a lot of time. So one last thing I wanted to add <laughs> just before we go yeah. is just something that like I feel a lot of people are missing these days with social media and stuff and it's like don't be just a billboard. I see a lot of people, a lot of friends who do photo, video, creative stuff, music and all I see is just a billboard. Check my workout, check my workout, check my song out, check my photo out, check my video out and it becomes totally numbing and they have zero reason for me to listen because all they are is an ad. And I think once you start providing more of a reason to listen, you know, articles about where photography is going or articles about the digital music industry, like just it's so easy to do that kind of stuff. And I think a lot of my friends who struggle with like photography um, or video as um, as it, with social media, there's sort of like I post all these pictures, but I don't know why I'm not getting the business. You have to be more than just someone who's just a billboard, you know, and um, I think a lot of people are missing that, and, and I think that be yourself and, and provide a reason for people to care and not always have to be about your business. You know, give them, make them laugh a little, whatever it is, like figure out that, that personality you want to be known for. But I think that's really huge, and that was a, a big part to my success with my referral network is that I felt like I provided more than just like here's my thing, here's my thing, look it, look it, look it, and like it, like it, like it. Dude, that is a stellar, stellar, stellar point because that is what so many of us get caught up in doing. We're like, 
We're creating great work. We're going to put that great work out there, but that's all we're ever going to put out there. And we're just going to keep, and I love how yeah. you just called it an ad, just called it a billboard. It becomes numbing because they just see the same thing and now they don't even really, like they don't think anything of it. You're never really providing because the only time I found that valuable where people would share it was when I was creating wedding videos all the time. And like a lot of people saw value in watching this other person's wedding. But when you're creating like yeah. non-wedding things, like not everybody cares about all these like yeah, yeah. independent things. And so when you're just constantly flushing that out to your audience and they don't all connect with it and you're not providing them any other value but just look at – because one quick point that I knew that I had to change some things in my career. I would always show on Sunday mornings my parents' stuff that I had done from that week. And, man, for the longest time, it, especially my mom, would always just be so, oh, my gosh. I had hit a point where they were like, let's go, all right. Like I wasn't able to yeah, impress yeah, yeah. them anymore. They were so numbed yeah. by seeing this similar thing. And that's a little, like, yeah. different from what you're saying, but it's still, like, you've got to be able to stick out and always kind of innovate and be different, too. Because that's the other thing. Yeah. You get stuck in a rut of creating the same type of video and nothing unique, nothing different about it, that everybody's just like, I've seen one, I've seen them all, you know? So. Yeah, exactly. Totally. Rock and roll. Well, my man? Good stuff. Chris? Good? Basically, I've got, like, I've got like 90 other things I could talk about, I but, we, but I don't want to. Well, don't man, want to we appreciate you being on. Like I said, we'll, <laughs> we'll let you go here. We're going to finish up a few things to everybody. But, dude, thank you so much, and we all uh, wish Thanks, you Mike. the absolute best in the coming years. I know it's going to be the people you're meeting, uh, life-changing, just, just that alone, you know, regardless of what else happens. You will have so many amazing connections that could lead you off any path that you want to go down. And so. Yeah, for sure, man. And let's uh, – you know, let's put that on the map for us all to get together someday for sure. Dude, I love that. I got a few friends out in Seattle too, so I, I definitely uh, uh, come out and visit. Love to hook up. So, Absolutely. Rock and roll, buddy. Cool. We'll, we'll keep in touch. All right, fellas. You guys have a good one. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks so much, Mike. Man. Appreciate you, buddy. Take it easy. Right. Yep. Rock and roll. Later. Rock and roll. That was good. I love awesome this. Just call, like you man. said, Chris, man, it, it's it's so exciting, guys, every week to be able to see into different people's businesses, into different people's lives, and see how really there's always there's so many ways you can take it. And really, at the end of the day, and I, I totally connect with with Mike in the sense of like, you got to be you. And I know sometimes that can be high in the sky, fluffy, whatever, but really, like. Any approach, when focused on, can really work. Like, I mean, there's probably a few that don't work as well, but in the grand scheme of things, like even just where I'm at right now and, and, and the people I'm, I'm with, like focus, clarity. They know who they are. They know what they're, they're working towards. And whether that's a video production company or any kind of company, when you know who you are and what you're great at and what people can come to you for, you're going to crush it. And don't get so sidetracked with, well, this guy said this, and this guy said this, and this guy said that, and, you know, I'm going to go down this rabbit trail for a month and try this guy's things out, and I'm going to go down this way. Like, it's great to hear these different point of views, and maybe you'll connect with one, and, and, and it it's you, though. And I think that's what you guys got to keep in mind is, is it you? And um, as opposed to, I'm just going to do and emulate what somebody else did because that looks sexy. And... Um, so Chris, if you want to want to add a little bit there, but um... I just keep thinking about you know all these. You know, one of the biggest challenges we have as our own individual production companies, and of course we you know we teach constantly with our coaching program at Create about how you have to learn. It's like you have to develop competencies in all areas of your business in order to to grow and to be more successful. But the reality is, it's impossible to be really good at all those areas. You know, like I'm, you know, I'm a competent marketer, I'm a competent sales guy, you know, I'm a good producer, good director, that whole thing. But even the areas that I've developed competencies in, there's not enough time to really do them well and or to do them consistently over a long term. So what happens? You know, I mean we face this at Create, we face it in, in you know in my production company, it's like, you know, I'll I'll start a marketing program that works really freaking well. 
And then what happens? I get booked for like a month straight. And then guess what? Marketing stops for a month, you know, because it's like the engine has to keep going. So I've had this like, you know, crazy idea for years. And I don't know, it's probably completely stupid and, and off the wall nuts. But, you know, I keep thinking, what if at some point, you know, there was this development of this like super video production agency, you know, where, you know, there's, Hell, even if it was like a 30-person partnership or something, you know, with, with all of these people across the country, maybe even across the world, and each partner, you know, had, had that core competency in one of those areas. You know, like if, if one production company was just really kicking butt with the marketing stuff, you know, they would then be the marketing arm of this super company. And then, you know, the same with the sales and the production management and the producing and the directing and the editing and the shooting, kind of that whole deal. Because... It's like one of the things that, that sort of jogged my memory or on that was when Mike said, um, you know, how can you afford to build the team that you need, you know, or that you want? And the reality is you, you can't, not unless you're going to go out and get, you know, some, some money guys involved and, you know, they inject a couple hundred thousand dollars, maybe even a few million into you. But, but it's just like you don't want to get in that game. And so it's, it's just something that I've looked at for years thinking, you know, is it, number one, is it even viable, you know, to kind of create these conglomerate video production companies, even if it's not just one, if people start doing this kind of around the country, and number two, could you generate enough business so that financially everybody within this, this massive partnership are doing as well or better than they were doing before they came into the partnership? And then, of course, number three, you know, how do you, how do you manage it all? I mean, how do, you, how do you, you know, build systems to keep it all together and all that? And I think, and honestly, I think number three is probably the easiest part. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so it, it's just, it's something that I keep thinking about, you know, sort of as individuals or as each little small company, it's, it's we can carve out enough business to pay our bills, you know, maybe have a little bit of profit at the end, you know, hire a couple of employees. But it's very difficult to grow to a point where we really have something substantial. I mean, the kind of thing that we can give, you know, to our children, our grandkids, or whatever, or to be able to, you know, become, uh, you know, wealthy business owners as production company owners. I mean, it's just I, I don't even know that that's going to be possible anymore in the existing model of a very small you know, pocket production companies in the different areas. So anyway, I mean, that's just kind of uh, one of the things that I've been thinking about. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure that it's the kind of thing that I want to spearhead at this point, but I, I think it's an interesting conversation. And maybe maybe what can come from that, it's like a, you know, you go to New York City to see the fashion shows, and it's always super crazy, ridiculous outfits, but what happens? Then all the other, you know, the Targets and the JCPenney's, they kind of take those ideas and scale them down to something that works in, in their retail market. So maybe we could take an idea like that, break it apart, and maybe do some things that are a little more conceptual, even in your local market. I mean, if I had, you know, two or three other guys in Chattanooga, Tennessee, who, you know, specialize in kind of the different areas, and we form a partnership, you know, and we focus on those different areas, could we potentially grow a company that's at least, you know, three or four or five or ten times as large than we can do on our own, and then we're positioning ourselves as this massive video production agency that, you know, the other smaller production companies aren't even going to be able to compete with. So anyway, that's just, just a thought, just a small thought. <laughs> and, that, and that's the thing, guys, and, there, and there's so many ways, and, and I think that that's the aspect of where you really have to consider because that's the thing we saw in one of our coaching calls last week is somebody going, you know what, but I only like the art. You know, I only like the creative. You know, so you've got to decide what part, and that's kind of like there'd be a guy in that part of the company. But um, you know, so that's the thing, guys. Is, is there's a lot of ways to do things. Uh, we're here at Create Insights. Uh, Chris and I do that to uh, to help you guys kind of figure out what you've got going on and the business side of things of growing your video production company. We've got the links up on screen. Uh, we'd love for you to come check that out. We've got a trial where you can get in for 30 days. Uh, get on on coaching calls just like this. I've got a great positive community. Um, we, we love to help people out. We'd love to, 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 to come and check it out. Um, so 
We appreciate everything. Um, that's going to be it for we'll have a coaching call tomorrow. It's every Wednesday, so there'll be one on. If you, if you sign up for the trial, you can get in on tomorrow and check it out. It's two hours of just going back and forth, nothing but questions, nothing but people telling us what they've got going on and how things work, maybe it didn't work, how they can improve upon it. So it's really awesome. So you guys want to get in on that. Um, as of right now, I don't think we have an expert interrogation this Thursday. Uh, but we've got a few more coming up, so uh, be sure to check this out. And if you want to get on, we have expertinterrogations.com here if you want to get on the email list. There's some goodies when you sign up, and uh, check that out. We have an archives page, and it's really cool, guys. Every single um, call, you can go below the call within a few days. And there's a timestamp of every single question uh, that was asked during that call, and you can go right to the time code, um, listen to that. And it, it, it's really great. So all the archives on the archives page, uh, you can do that. There's also audio downloads you put on your iPods or, or whatever. Um, so uh, that's great, guys. So we appreciate you guys being on here. We appreciate the support. We couldn't do this without you guys. Um, so is that it, Chris? It's never it, man. But we gotta we gotta harness never it. it. We gotta harness it into a few hours every week so we can all get our get our work done. But yeah, right. guys, go there now, man. CreateInsights.com slash coaching. Free trial, free trial, guys. 30 days of everything for free. You know, it, you can't beat it. Just give it a shot. And, you know, if you get in there, you don't like it, whatever. You can leave. You're not going to hurt our feelings. Uh, so, yeah, we'll see those members that are on here. Appreciate you. We'll see you tomorrow. And uh, if you're not a member and you're on here, hope to see you tomorrow. Yep. <laughs> Appreciate it, guys. See you guys. Thanks so much. Peace. Thank you, Mike. Later.